Sunday of Easter at Living Hope Lutheran Church in Ettrick, Wisconsin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation, amen. Join together in Christ, in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. from Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, verses 14a, 36 through 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Here ends the first reading. Psalm 116, 1 through 4, 12 through 19. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplications. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called up the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. 
Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, I truly am your servant. I am the servant, the child of your hand made. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Here ends the psalm. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1, 17 through 23. If you invoke his Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel for this third Sunday of Easter is from the Gospel of Luke, beginning with the 24th chapter. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they neared the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and he gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. 
Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As the disciples were on the road that first Easter, they meet a man. We know he's Jesus, but they don't. They don't seem to recognize him. And as people do, they begin to converse with him. And because he's on their minds, they tell the man about Jesus, their Messiah. They say, we had hoped. We had hoped he was the one. And it is in this simple phrase we hear, those hopes that they had for Jesus have been dashed. We hear their disappointment, the loss of dreams, the sadness, the bewilderment. We had hoped. And on week whatever it is of the pandemic, as we live into a world that is so different, we have also hoped. We had hoped that maybe we'd be together by Easter to worship in this church. We had hoped to gather as families, to sit down together with our Easter ham. We had hoped that school would be in session by now and we'd get to see our friends. We had hoped to go to prom and attend graduation. We had hoped to hold our wedding surrounded by our family and friends. We had hoped to get our haircuts and to hug our friends. We had hoped to visit grandma in the hospital or at the nursing home. We had hoped to have a few more years with our dad. We had hoped. As we travel down this road, we had hoped too. So we kind of understand the disciples feeling like their bubbles have been burst. We understand their fear, their sadness and grief. They had hoped that the man they knew as Jesus was the one. He was the one who would change everything for them, that his resurrection would be complete with bells and whistles and a laser light show. He would be their spectacular money back guaranteed Messiah. They had hoped he was the one. And we know, as they described their Messiah to this stranger, he was actually walking alongside them. He was listening to them, yet they didn't recognize Jesus. But when they got to their destination and invited him to stay, when they sat down after their long day's journey on the night of that first Easter, when they shared a meal together, then, then their eyes were open and they saw God. It's Jesus, their Messiah in their presence. It's all true. He has risen from the dead. They now see him as they sit together doing something very ordinary. It's not a laser light show. It's not fireworks. They now see him when they share a simple meal together. We live in a time when we had hoped for many things that are simply not gonna be. And it's hard. It's sad. 
we grieve. But even in the midst of things we had hoped that are not, Jesus still shows up. We, admit, we may have hoped for many things, but we never need to hope that Jesus is present because he is in the simplest of things, in the meals, even when we may sit alone at our tables. Jesus is there. As we look out our windows at the greening of the grass, Jesus is there. In the electronic gatherings we now have together, Jesus is there. In tears being shed for a deceased father, husband, and grandfather, Jesus is there. May God give us eyes to see because this Jesus, he is our hope. Amen. throughout the world, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With all the people of God, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's people. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, the response is, hear our prayer. We pray for our households, our communities, and our congregations. 
for the meals that are shared, the footprints we make together, and all the ways Jesus is present in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for those who suffer from illness, loneliness, addiction, and grief, that they may find the support and treatment they need to be renewed. This morning, we especially pray for the family and friends of Louis Salzweedle, for Mark, Gail, Doris, and Ernie, for Dorothy, for all who we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, guide all government officials, directors, and professionals with insight and wisdom as they continue to provide leadership and safety for communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, as the seasons change, we find ourselves rediscovering your beautiful creation all around us in our bird watching, dog walking, hiking, and yard work. Fill our hearts with gratitude and show us how to care for the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us, for those who have provided us a witness of the faith. We thank you for Louis Salzweedle. We pray, Lord, for that day when we will gather again with you around that feast that knows no ending. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we give all these prayers to you trusting in your mercy and grace through Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. On this Sunday when we cannot commune together at the table and we miss receiving the body and blood of Jesus Christ, let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of Holy Communion. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you through the sacraments. Come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, loving and serving the Lord. Thanks be to God.